Hello everyone. Uh, very nice to see such a crowd of young students and I'm sure there are experienced people as well. So like many of you, some six years back, I was also sitting in one of these benches in my college and someone like myself, which was three, four years older than me, took a lecture on entrepreneurship, sharing their journey. That inspired me to start a company of my own. And today here I am trying to share my journey of building a startup from scratch to acquisition so that hopefully it inspires some of you to take entrepreneurship as a career choice. So it all began in the summers of 2016 when it was the end of my third year of college. I was interning at a startup uh, in the Silicon Valley which was very fast growing. It was like a dream internship or a dream job for me. I was earning $8,000 a month as a stipend working at a very nice tech company, talented people in the heart of Silicon Valley, everything good you can imagine. But one problem I faced one month down the line, which was that if I reached office one hour late or if I reached office one hour earlier, it did not matter. That was a challenge for me because I have always been someone who always wanted to do big things in life. And here I was at a company where I was getting into a comfort zone. And that's not what something I wanted for myself for a long term. So right after my internship got ended and when I came back to India, I started exploring some options. I was fortunate to get a pre-placement offer from this company where I interned. So in the entire fourth year of college, I really did not have to worry about placements. And I wanted to stay back in India, do something of my own. So I didn't have to go for masters or GRE preparation, which is where a lot of students spend their time. Lastly, in my college, the undergrad project was also optional. So which means I had full seventh and eighth semester of college to explore myself, to figure out my entrepreneurship career and to do something. And the best part is that in college, in the fourth year of college, you are not expected to earn money. So I can try things, I can fail and still not be seen negatively by the society, which is unfortunately very common in our society. I partnered with a friend of mine. He came from a business community like myself. So both of us were instantly ready. I mean, he did not think twice before jumping into the idea of entrepreneurship because in his community also they saw doing business as a better option. His father was also an entrepreneur. So both of us started exploring ideas and that's when we got to know about the department of entrepreneurship in our college itself. So there are so many departments and we have both been programmers, software engineers. So like I'm sure many of you here would understand that so as software engineers, we are so focused on writing code that we do not look uh, things which are outside, which are other options. Same way, in my college also, I've always spent time figuring out programming and technology and stuff. Never really thought that there is an entrepreneurship department that exists in college. The best part was that when we enrolled in some of these courses, these uh, in a typical engineering college, you'll see courses which have pen and paper based exams. There are assignments and you write and you are graded and stuff. Here it was very different. The professors were not really academicians. It was an entrepreneurship class, so all of the professors were themselves entrepreneurs. Some of them were billionaires. They had listed companies in the US and NASDAQ and NYSE stock exchanges. So that gave us a great opportunity to learn from their actual experiences. And moreover, the objective of these courses was, as I said, not to write exams, but to go and build a company. Find a problem statement, find a customer segment who is facing that problem statement, build a product and build a business around it. So we had to choose a problem statement and to start on top of that. So my friend and I, we came up with a very interesting problem statement, which many of you can relate to. When I was in another different city, right, for my engineering and my parents were in my hometown, if they had to book a cab or if they had to order food online or they had to order something from the e-commerce websites, they used to call me for help. And that's a problem because sometimes I'm in a lecture, sometimes I'm busy with something and then they have a dependency on me. They have a smartphone, they have internet connection, but then using these apps is difficult mainly because making payment becomes a tedious task, OTP and all of that, you hear about cyber frauds, uh, money leaking out of the bank account due to a fraud, right? So because of that, we found that this is an interesting problem statement to begin with. And as I said, as a part of the course, we actually had to go and talk to potential customers, prospects who are facing this problem. That's what we did. We went out, we met a lot of people, we met youngsters like ourselves who were on the side of booking these tickets or parents and elderly who were facing this problem. And we got a great validation by talking to customers. And you know, it was a great experience because as programmers, we always wanted to write code to build solution. And here we were not writing code, not building solution, but going out in the real world, talking to people, understanding their real pain points and problems. So with that, we learned a lot. When we presented the problem statement as a presentation and whatever we did to our professors, their feedback was that if you build it as a consumer facing product, 
you will have to spend a lot of money in acquiring customers in making them aware of the product. So why don't you take this technology and license it to these companies who face this problem for their customers? I mean, imagine taking this product to a flight booking application, right? So that elderly people, they can book flights via a phone call rather than using the complicated app. So through the support of some of our mentors, we figured out that banking is a great area. Banking is also very complicated. Uh, mobile banking and net banking, they are so advanced even today, but then still a lot of our parents do not want to use it. So how can we enable them to bank on their own without dependency on us? That's the problem statement we took. We met some of these big banks in India, some private sector banks, some public sector banks, some of the biggest banks in the country. And obviously there were two young kids, 21 year old, trying to pitch their product to executives who are wearing tie, who are highly paid in reputed companies. It was a tough task. You know, in one of the banks, literally at the end of the presentation, we wrote next steps as do a pilot, graduate from college. Needless to say, we were kicked out of the room instantly. So all of that helped us learn a lot. Through the support of our advisors, we met one of the large public sector banks. And fortunately, the timing was very right. They had their bank's foundation day coming up in a couple of months. And so they really liked that solution. They saw two innovative youngsters who are agile, who are flexible, and who are willing to build as per what the bank wants. So they saw it as an opportunity as well. We leapt onto that and we told them that we can do it in a timeline that you want. They had a program in which we had to incorporate a company, right? I mean, all of these banks, they work with institutions rather than individuals. So we went back, incorporated a company, and it took almost a month at that time. Now, company incorporation is much faster. You can do it in less than a week's worth of time. But this is back in 2017, it took a month. When we came back after a month, they forgot us. And you know, it was a huge disappointment for us because both of us at the end of the day came from some middle class families. And so we had to race against our job. College was about to end. This was eighth semester going on and the job deadline was also coming. We didn't want to go there, right? We didn't want to take that route. So now what we did was we convinced the junior person in the, in the office of the DGM who saw our product in this bank to get us the gate pass every single day, right? And he got us the gate pass and we used to sit outside the DGM office every day. We used to see him as if he owes us money, right? Because he did not owe us money, of course, but he owed us business. He gave us a hope one month back that he will give us business. And now we saw that hope shattering in front of eyes. We were pers persistent enough. Every single day we used to sit there. Every single day we, we did not go from there throughout the day. And after a while, the DGM understood that these kids are not going anywhere. Some business has to be given to them. And that is how he will solve his own problem of getting rid of us. So he told us that, in two months, Bank's Foundation Day is coming. Why don't you launch a chat-based solution using which end consumers can query their basic questions about personal loan, car loan, how to apply, what are the charges, what is the interest rate, right, and so on and so forth. So that, we, we immediately saw that opportunity. They gave us two weeks of time to build a solution. We were both programmers. We picked up some open source libraries, some knowledge of whatever we had learned in our courses, and built a raw proof of concept within a week. So they were very impressed with our speed and agility, and they liked the end product. And they said, why don't you take it as a fully fledged contract with us uh, and launch it in a full scale solution on the foundation day. After a long and tedious activity of iterations, security requirements of the bank, negotiations with people as senior as our age, right? There were GMs who were negotiating with us, general managers, whose experience was more than our age combined. Finally, we got a $100,000 contract with the bank. And that's how we sort of got our first order and raised against our time to not join the jobs. So it was a great starting point. The bank is a large group in India. They referred us to their subsidiaries in life insurance. They referred us to their subsidiaries in mutual fund. And that got us started with three large companies in India across three industries within financial services. Everything seems like a great start that happened, right? But no, entrepreneurship journey is not at all easy. You have to go through certain ups and downs. We also went through the similar journey. After about a year and a half of running the business with these three customers, one more customer we acquired in between, my co-founder abruptly decided to quit. For me, I came from a small family, like a $10,000 per year uh, type of salary family, business family. So a $100,000 contract was 10 times my father's earning. For my co-founder, my friend, my business partner, it was the exact opposite. His father was very rich, he was a builder, and so for him it was like a downgrade. So the compatibility did not match and he abruptly quit the company. That was the lowest point in my life because Everybody started questioning me. My parents were concerned that, where is your co-founder? My friends were concerned, where is your co-founder gone? 
Customers were concerned, where is your co-founder gone? We had one intern, one full-time employee, they were concerned, where is your co-founder gone? So that, as I said, was the toughest point in my life and what I did was I persisted. I said, look, we have certain purchase orders pending with our customers, the contracts which they have given to us. If we deliver these contracts, we, will, we are in business, we are back in business. And four large enterprises of the country, multi-billion dollar brands working with us is not a joke. We are definitely up to something and we should not quit at this point in time. So I had a friend from college, I convinced her to leave her job. So she was also working at a global bank in uh, one of the cities nearby Mumbai. She left her job, I, I, I mean it took a lot of effort to convince her because you know it's a sinking ship and you are convincing people to jump into that ship, giving them the hope. But then she agreed and she joined me and we never looked back. We distributed our work because customers already knew me, right? These four customers, they already knew me. I started looking everything on the customer side, which is front ending in front of customers, sales meetings, project, uh, project delivery, customer success. And my co-founder, Harshita, she started looking everything on the technology, product development, right? delivery of the certain projects. And that worked like a charm for us. All the mistakes which we had done with my earlier co-founder, we corrected all those mistakes and worked together. And we built a fantastic business in conversational AI. The objective was to help India, help our country become more financially inclusive. Because as I mentioned, banking is a difficult domain. So many people are not able to avail financial services just because they are not technology savvy. Using our projects, using our product, as you can see, we were able to provide a lot of benefit. The chatbots and conversational AI products, they can provide assistance to customers in their language, which means Hindi, English, Tamil, Telugu, Gujarati, whatever language people prefer in the medium of their choice, which means if they can use internet and mobile, they can use the website, or they can go on channels like WhatsApp or Instagram, round the clock, which means 24 seven. Which many of us, I'm sure, we are free, we, we have free time to spend on these daily activities like banking and stuff, only over the weekends, and the branches are unfortunately closed. So using our products, the objective was to build a solution that enables India to do banking better, enables our country and possibly enable the world to do to achieve financial services in a better manner. And that's how we built our business. Fast forward another one, one and a half years, COVID happened. COVID was fortunately a great event for us. It was unfortunately a sad event for the world. A lot of people lost their lives. A lot of businesses went bankrupt. But our solution, as you can understand, it enables businesses to power their customer support using technology. So when the call centers got stuck because of work from home, that's when all of these big enterprises, they started looking for solutions like ours, using which they can provide customer support at the home of the customer in their smartphone. So we got a huge surge in demand. Many large banks, many large financial institutions, they saw that there is a startup who has some six, six to 10 customers at that time. And many of them onboarded us as their service partner. Our business grew 10x within two years of time frame. That drew attention from a lot of companies in the market, other companies, other players in the similar space. One of the players, which is a leader in cloud telephony, right? So you get a call from your cab driver or uh, a food delivery boy. So all of these calls are powered by cloud telephony. One of the company, which is a leader in this space in India, they reached out to us for an acquisition offer. We saw huge synergies because they had 7,000 plus customers. Like a, th having thousands of customers, they had spent 10 years in the market to acquire so many customers across so many countries, building a huge base of trust among their users. So we immediately saw that as an opportunity because we said we, it will take us another five or 10 years to reach that stage. If they have done that by riding on top of them, we can acquire these customers much faster. We can reach close to our goal much faster. So we entered into an acquisition agreement with them in November, 2021, roughly one and a half years ago from uh, today's date. And it has been a great decision that we took. I am personally learning a lot of things because I am the youngest member in their leadership team. Their revenues are close to like $80 million a year, which is a lot. So me being a part of that leadership team, learning from the experiences of people who are 20 years senior to me, being able to get access to such a large customer base. And most importantly, it has been a great financial outcome for me. After all the effort I spent seeing my friends at Google who are enjoying in Yosemite National Park or some other foreign country, right? And me slogging here 16 hours a day, working hard to get every single customer. So it has been a great financial outcome in that way. So finally, I would like to share some of my learnings. Biggest learning is that starting early. So many of you are in college. I think it's the best time to start up. 
as i said nobody expects you to earn money while in college you can fail you can lose and still nobody will see you negatively and that is absolutely fine you know the biggest trump card that you have is your college id card when we met these professors when we met the prospects the customers we never presented ourselves as entrepreneurs or businessmen we always presented ourselves as academicians and researchers from college who are trying to build a better country so everybody is open to help you rather than getting worried about being sold something second don't give up i could have gone for one of those google or facebook or amazon job offers at the time when my co-founder quit right i also had that option to go for one of those offers and wind up my shop but then today this talk would not be happening because there would have been no story to talk about so don't give up if you want to build a story third is focus we spent a lot of time in the financial services space as you know when i started the conversation i talked about flight flight booking cab booking but we figured out that banking and financial services is a great use case so we nailed it down really really well and today we have 100 plus financial services customers and we are seen as experts in that space which we are absolutely not and that is purely because we are focusing on in the one domain fourth execution is the key if you want to start a business many people start thinking about 50 different ideas and then seeing some startup raise millions of dollars in funding they get excited but what is the reality is you have to do the ugly thing you have to do the boring thing and just focus on executing every single day lastly we were bootstrapped in all of this journey you heard in the introduction that we crossed a million dollars in revenue and all of that was purely bootstrapped we were customer funded we were not venture capital or investor funded so that way are we built a business in which customers believed in us bought our product and paid us and we got actual revenues and profits rather than being funded by venture capitalists who are helping us bear our losses so yeah that's about it that was my entrepreneurship journey in us i think 15 to 20 minutes of time i hope it helps other people get an idea of what is it to be an entrepreneur and more people take career entrepreneurship as a career option thank you